Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are wrapping up our path to the Hipper, which can mean only one thing, folks. We're on the Hipper. So let's look at our uh, commander build. We're running Carl von Muller. We have Francesco Mimbelli and Nikolai Kuznetsov. We have uh, Beyond Range, Igniter, Punch Through, Fixated, and Fully Packed as our commander skills. For equipment, we're running Aiming Systems Mod 1, Propulsion Mod 2, Concealment System Mod, and Main Battery Mod 3. For loadout, you can see we've got that, that beautiful sonar, which has the detection of ships out to 5.6 kilometers. We still have our fighters, and we have three heals because of the fully packed. Uh, for flag, we'll go ahead and throw our alpha test flag back on there, and we are running the Azure Lane um, camo. Good lord, couldn't think of it for a moment. For survivability, you got 43,800 hit points with a 10% torpedo damage reduction. For artillery, you have 203mm L60, so 60 caliber 203mm guns, SKC-34s. You have eight of those that reach out to 18.2 kilometers, reload in 9.6 seconds, and have a 180 degree turn time of 25.9 seconds. HE shell maximum damage is 2700 with a 16% chance to set fires. AP shell maximum damage is 6,480. Secondaries, you have 105mm L65 Doppel C31s that you have 12 of that fire out to 5.2 kilometers, reloading in just 3.3 seconds. They fire HE with a maximum damage of 1,200 and an 8% chance to set fires. For torpedoes, you have the 533mm drillings. You get 12 of those that reload in 68 seconds and do a maximum damage of 13,700. They have a 1.3 kilometer detection and they reach out to 6 kilometers with a 64 knot torp speed. AA Defense, you have 20mm Vlack Swilling 38s that you have 8 of. Uh, they do 17 damage per second, reach out to 2 kilometers. Then you have the 20mm Flak Veerling 38s that you have 24 of that do 36 damage per second and reach out to 2 kilometers. Then you have the 40mm L56 Flak 28s that you have 18 of doing 135 damage per second, reaching out to 3.5 kilometers. And then you have the 105mm L65 Doppel C31s that you have 12 of doing 100 damage per second and reaching out to 4.5 kilometers. Maneuverability, 33.3 knots with a 740 meter turning circle. Rudder shift time is not good with this build. Now you can get this much better if you desire, uh, down to 9.7 seconds. And concealment is 11.6 uh, by sea, 7.3 by air, two is always guaranteed in 7.9 kilometers while firing in smoke. Um, armor. This is where this thing actually has decent armor. Uh, you have the 40 millimeter armor belt that is not insubstantial. Like it is actually quite a wide belt of 40 millimeter armor, meaning it cannot be overmatched at the waterline by any battleship in the game. However, where it's not at the armor belt, it is 27 millimeters thick, meaning it is much like the Baltian, the fact that it is immune from being overmatched at the bow by 15 centimeter guns and below but anything bigger than 15 centimeters can put a shot right through your bow. Now the good news is with that belt armor, even though the belt does not go all the way to the, the front of the ship, there is a small area that a shell could potentially go straight through and citadel you through the front. However, more likely they're going to aim high towards your guns and they're going to punch you through the front for 10 to 12k probably, but not citadel you. Okay. Now let's look at the side armor. Do, do, do. You can see the turtleback armor that everybody loves for whatever reason. Uh, honestly, on the hipper, it doesn't seem to work because it doesn't matter if it's a cruiser or a battleship, this thing does not stop rounds from citadeling it. Period. Um, but we get rid of the conning tower armor. Uh, we look at this. You can see that you have 27 to 80 millimeters on the side of the ship. So 27 millimeters up high, 80 millimeters down low, meaning you're not going to be overmatched by 15 inch guns at the higher side of your ship. 
uh, meaning you can angle up against them pretty well, uh, which allows you to get close, which is nice. Uh, however, in order to become immune to those 16 inch guns and above, that 80 millimeter belt has to be what takes the shelf. Uh, if the 27 millimeter belt takes, or if the 27 millimeter side plating takes the 16 inch and above, doesn't matter what the angle is because it overmatches. So keep that in mind. All right. So now for the, the turtle back, you can see the Citadel location on this thing is pretty uh, much the waterline, a little bit above the waterline, but the part that sticks up above the waterline is angled. So up close, in theory, you're not going to get Citadel, but honestly, don't don't count on it because this thing gets Citadel by everything. So that's just my opinion, or at least my experience with it and against it, especially Balti. Balti shreds hippers if they overangle. Um, and easily citadels them. So, honestly, I've, I've never been impressed by the turtle back of the, uh, the hipper, but it is what it is. One thing I will say about this thing is it tends to survive the initial hit from a battleship up close, so maybe there is something to it, but, uh, cruisers tend to punish it. But, uh, battleships will take three quarters of the health off of this thing and leave it alive just long enough to get those, uh, torpedoes off and kill you. So, that is one thing I will say about it. It does seem to work against battleships up close, but against uh, cruisers, not so much. Overview. Extended sonar. Sonar range or duration is increased. We already talked about that. 5.6 kilometer surface detection, which is ridiculous. Superior AP damage, above average AP shell damage. And superior HE penetration, above average HE shell penetration. Hipper. A heavy cruiser that matched most ships of her type in terms of speed and the power of her armament, the ship boasted distinct advantages typical of the German Navy's ships, i.e. an advanced gunfire control system and a high level of survivability. Those advantages were the result of the ship's decent armor protection, rugged construction, and her elaborate subdivision into compartments. She entered service in 1939. There were five of them in the series. We have two Hipper class... Uh, Actually, I lied. We have more than two Hipper classes because we have the one that was sent to the uh, the Russians too, right? I'm trying to think. What is that called? Somebody's going to let me know down in the comments below and I guess the first person to get it right, I'll pin you. But uh, we do have the Prinz Eugen and the Hipper in here, both of them Hipper class. And like I said, I'm fairly confident we just had one put into the game not too long ago as a Russian cruiser that was sent. Uh, so all the same ships, basically. Uh, sister ships anyway so let's take a look at this thing uh, it's a good looking ship I, I've always liked the look of the hipper uh, I like this camo too it's pretty cool I actually like some of the flashier camos uh, it's pretty rare I don't like some of the really ridiculous camos but this one's not bad not too bad at all so with that being said let's get into the gameplay alrighty so we are going to be on northern waters and we're in the hipper and there's probably a question that you guys are all thinking, like, Spartan, why would you not put a rudder build on this thing? Uh, I've been I've been hearing that a lot, a lot through this entire uh, thing, and the the answer is pretty simple. I didn't check my builds going into the the videos. Like I just went out and started recording the videos, didn't think to check the builds. So a lot of these builds are like builds from several years ago, because I don't play these ships. I just don't. They're not my, my favorites, so I just don't play them. Um, so, with that being said, that's why in the videos you guys see a specific build with, you know, like this one, in, for instance, had propulsion mod and concealment system mod instead of the double rudder build, uh, which would obviously be better for these because they tend to be a little bit sluggish in the turning, and being able to avoid getting hit is the name of the game, and probably would have helped me considerably in this match uh, that you're about to see. So, with all of that in mind, just know that I'm not a complete idiot. I do know that a rudder build on these are better. I get that. I don't use Lutchens, but you don't really need Lutchens. I mean, even with, um, even with our uh, build that we have currently, if you go double rudder, I think you can get the rudder shift down to 4.6 seconds, which is plenty fast enough. You don't need it to be faster than that. Uh, and that preserves your, your uh, AP... Uh, penetration and the uh, igniter and all of that so personally that's the build that I would go for if I was running this more often was to just take off concealment system and propulsion mod and go with a double rudder build 
uh, and you would have a much, much easier time avoiding incoming fire, because one thing I will say is this game had the potential to be a carry and a half, and uh, unfortunately just wasn't able to pull it off. And I'm not trying to spoil it for you guys, I just wasn't able to pull it off. Uh, doesn't mean that the game still isn't a win, I'm just saying that it had the potential to be an absolute carry, and honestly, I did carry real hard on this side of the map, and you'll see as we go what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of fire spamming. Uh, I know the, the German cruisers are decently good at it, uh, especially with their better uh, HE penetration, even though these are heavy cruisers or armored cruisers. They have the 203 millimeter guns. They don't need the extra penetration, but I mean, having the extra penetration and bigger guns can't hurt, right? You're gonna have less shatters overall. But uh, yeah, you can see that uh, our accuracy at long range is uh, leaving a little bit to be desired against these guys, but uh, we have already put up 25,000 damage, which isn't bad considering we've been shooting HE. Um, you can see that salvo from that Roma is absolutely ridiculous. That accuracy is ridiculous. I wish my Roma would do that at these sorts of ranges. My Roma can't do that when they're three kilometers away from it. But, uh, yeah. Fortunately, we were able to turn in and avoid most of the damage from that salvo. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the Amagi. The Roma has put out the fire, unfortunately. But, uh, we, we can't really deal with him at the moment because he's behind an island. So, we're gonna focus the Amagi instead. And we're going to start to turn away. We get a fire on the Amagi. Amagi fires all of his guns at us in anger. And uh, we need to avoid those. So we do for the most part. But he gets a couple of penetrations. And again, that's where that extra rudder shift would have really come in handy. Um, base rudder shift on this thing being, being what it was. I think it was, what, 9.6 seconds or something like that. Uh, is not preferable. So getting that rudder shift down would be a good idea. And so for all of you guys that are just waiting to type up in the comments, maybe you already typed the comment and you just now realize that I, I actually am addressing this. Uh, like you guys, just calm down. I do know what I'm doing, even though uh, clearly I should check my builds before I jump in and try to record games. But maybe that just makes this game even more, uh, you know, epic. I'm, I'm not using a perfect build from, you know, the hipper himself uh you know i'm just using the ship and what it is and trying to do the best that i can with it and uh showcasing that this thing is very dangerous if it's left to its own devices again that goes for any cruiser but the germans also like with that extra a he uh penetration i mean sure these are 203s you could argue that the americans get just as much damage with their 203s as these do with HE, but uh, yeah, that one right there hurt. That gross occur first just hit me with that many shells from 18 kilometers away. Where is this accuracy when I'm in these ships? The Roma hits me with all of those shells, the GK hits me with all those shells. I'm down to half health just like that. Luckily, I'm about to get a heal back, so I'm gonna be able to recover, and of course, that's when the uh, Amagi starts to fire back at us again. We're going to turn out to try to avoid them, and uh, we take one penetration through the back and a second penetration through the back. But we do get another fire on the Amagi, and uh, we're going to try to get another fire, see if we can't burn this man down. He had to damage con it because, I mean, he's pretty low health now. He's down to about 12,000, maybe 13,000 hit points. Uh, so if we can manage to finish this guy off, that's going to go a long way. Now, our team on the left side of the map should be able to win that side. My guys over here haven't done much of anything. Uh, I had two battleships on this side of the map, and they have uh, pretty much all died. Like, one's dead, and there goes the other one. So it is me versus an Amagi, a Roma, a Destroyer, and a Gross Occur first on this side of the map. And I've pretty much, you know, been the only one doing any sorts of damage over here. Uh, we're at 67, well, I might get 70,000 damage as we get hit by the Gross Occur first again. That, that guy's accuracy in this freaking game was ridiculous. I wish my group, my grocer would be that accurate more often. N not that I'm saying that the grocer is not accurate, because I'll be honest, it's definitely the most accurate battleship for the Germans. Uh, and the problem with it is it's just too big. It's so easy to, to mess up as a, uh, as a cruiser or a battleship. Like, the GK is just a gigantic damage sponge, essentially. But uh, we do have a lot of cruisers, which means we have a lot of DPM. Uh, we have a Cleveland, we have two mains, uh, or mines, whichever way you want to say it, and we have a destroyer over there. 
and then you have me versus everybody that's left, except their destroyer has now moved into the Bravo cap to flip that cap, uh, and I'm still over here fighting a Grossacur first, a Magi, and a Roma. Uh, now, the Roma has turned away from me and started heading back towards the mid. The Amagi, I believe, is still also heading back towards the mid. And then this GK gets me again. And again, this is where you would love to have that that rudder shift that I was talking about. But uh, Amagi fails to hit us. Like, that was an awful shot by him. Um, and we're going to go ahead and try to burn down a Grossa Kerfer, which I don't know if you guys have ever tried to burn down a, a ship that had 105,000 hit points to begin with. It takes a long time. And time is not something that we have a lot of because it just seems like i can never avoid his, sh his shells are perfectly finding my ship like i'm doing everything in my power to avoid these shots and again this is without the double rudder build but i'm doing everything i can to avoid his shots and he just keeps torching me uh, now he just damage conned his two fires so we're gonna go ahead and keep trying to set him on fire again you know if at first you don't succeed just keep keep going but uh, he fires his front guns at us. That's more AP on the way. This one a little easier looking to dodge, and we do get away with it. Uh, so we get we get to live a little longer. We're making the most out of our hit points, that's for sure. I will say that we we have always in the hipper uh, struggled to survive, but we always manage to put up games that are worth uh, you know showcasing. You know, as much as I hate the hipper, and I don't hate the hipper because of the reasons you think I hate the hipper, I hate the hipper because it just seems to get plowied every time I take it out. Like, it, it does really, really well if left alone. But if, if it gets shot at, it always ends up badly for me. Uh, as we're about to showcase once again, as this freaking GK takes another shot at us, and it's taken 20 minutes to get this thing turning, and we take another overpin, uh, and he took, as we set another fire, finally. Um... But we're, we're starting to bottleneck ourselves into a corner. Luckily, the GK turns away from us. We're looking at the, the Amagi here. Amagi shells look pretty good. And uh, we take two penetrations at the back of the ship. And you can see I'm requesting support from these freaking teammates. I don't know what they're doing. I've literally been fighting everything on the map, right? The only things that are left is a destroyer and a battleship that's in the middle. And there are two mines and a Cleveland over there. We lost our destroyer, clearly. So there are two mines and a Cleveland to fight one battleship and one freaking destroyer. They do manage to take that battleship out as I'm continuing to fight this freaking GK who has the best accuracy I've ever seen out of a GK. And we survive with just 128 hit points and are able to disengage for the moment. Now, with two Cleveland, or with a Cleveland and two mains, or mines, whatever you want to call it, against a freaking Amagi that has no health, that man should not survive 30 more seconds. Like, he should be dead. Those two mains alone would absolutely nuke that Amagi. Either of them. Let alone both of them. And a Cleveland. So, I have no idea why they don't. Uh, other than the fact that they're just in a bad position. They've uh, allowed the destroyer to not only capture Bravo, but also move directly across the front of them and go into the middle of Alpha and torp the freaking radar cruiser in the process. Because, of course, he did. Uh, you can't make this up. You just can't. And the other, uh, the other cruiser, is the mines, is going broadside on to the Amagi, who's on the backside of an island, and the Amagi appears to be coming out to say hello. I wonder how this is going to go. Raised Citadel broadside to a battleship with 10 410 millimeter guns. Well, he's he's turning away from him, and it doesn't matter because down he uh, down he goes. So yeah, unfortunately, that is how it goes. However, he gets a flesh wound, manages to take out the Amagi, and right now I'm feeling pretty freaking solid. Like it is just the GK that we know is decently low health. We've got a full health mains over here. And then there's me, who doesn't have any hit points. Okay? Now, the goal here was to not necessarily be the first to re-engage the GK. I was going to push back to where I could shoot at the GK and let the mains get all of the, the targets. I don't want to be shot at by this GK. So, the goal here is to take a shot while he's behind the island. See if we can't sneak some shots in there. Maybe get a, a cheeky fire as he comes around the island. And... We don't get the fire, but we do get a nice cheeky hit on him. Now, again, if I fire my guns here, I'm detected. 
clearly. But his guns aren't looking at me, so I'm thinking, okay, we can get away with this. I immediately start turning out, and his guns immediately start turning towards me. This man wants to finish what he starts. We get another fire on him. We take another shot. We disappear from behind the island, and this man takes a shot after I've disappeared. I've turned all the way out, and he gets the one hit that he needed. Like, are you kidding me? And we got a second fire on him, too. But he's going to DC that. And now we have this mains here, and this mains does the absolute worst freaking possible thing he could do, which is go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the GK at point-blank range. Like, I, I, you can't make it up. You wonder why we lost this match. All you have to do is look at the fact that we had a Cleveland and two mains, and both of them, or all three of them, just did stupid things and got themselves killed. Uh, so, you, you can't make it up. But the, the reason this is stupid is, A, you cannot miss these torpedoes if you are going to be... If this is your goal, is to torpedo this man. You can't miss. You have to hit these torpedoes. You have to anticipate him slowing down. And then on top of that, he takes a torpedo from the freaking destroyer that's probably had him spotted this entire time, which is why this GK knows that these torpedoes would be coming, and he's probably running his hydro. And so he fails to hit him with the torpedoes. He could have just went straight at the GK. Like, this is what I don't understand. Like, you have to understand what your ship is, right? You have to. The mains could have went straight at that GK. The likelihood that the GK takes him out what, with a single salvo before he rushes him and hits him with six torpedoes and kills him, slim and none. Or is it eight torpedoes per side? I can't remember. But either way, six or eight torpedoes per side of the ship. He could have easily killed the GK. Sure, he would have took a hit. We would have still probably lost because I highly doubt that the destroyer would be stupid enough to engage a mains in open water combat when he's got the lead in all the caps. But uh, backing up angled to a GK in a heavy cruiser, or in this case, a light cruiser, just a stupid idea again. And I'm not, I'm not bashing the guy. I'm just saying, you know, I call this stuff out so that people understand and, and can make some uh, changes. But uh, yeah, you can see... There was at least one mains over there that was doing pretty well, except he did end up making a mistake there at the end, going broadside to that uh, Amagi that had no hit points. But uh, if I had any help from these guys at all during the, the you know midpoint of this match, we would have won this match, guaranteed. But didn't happen. We did the best we could. 129,000 damage, 10 fires, so if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.